genetic explanations of aggression. So this is going to look at your other biological explanation of aggression. And in particular, we need to focus on the MAOA gene. So one way we could look at the genetic element of aggression is to study families and in particular look at twin studies and adoption studies. So monozygotic twins or MZ twins are identical twins. They share 100% of their genes and DNA, whereas dizygotic twins, DZ twins, share 50% of their genes. They are just siblings that are born at the same time. Now, McGuffin and Gottsman found that there was a higher concordance rate of aggressive behaviour in MZ twins in comparison to DZ twins. So for MZ twins, the concordance rate was 87% and it was 72% for DZ twins. Equally, further research has found that genes do account for about 40% of individual differences in all types of aggression. So the higher concordance rate seems to suggest that there is a genetic element that is leading to human aggression. Equally, we could look at adoption studies. So if an adoptee has aggressive behaviour and it correlates more with their biological parent as opposed to its adoptive parent, then it implies that there is a genetic implication. So one quite seminal piece of research was a study of adoptions in Denmark. Now, the study was um, looked at over 140,000 adoptions and they did find a significant positive correlation between the number of convictions um, for criminal violence between the adopted sons and biological parents in particular the father so if their biological father was a violent criminal then it was more likely that the adopted son would have a criminal violent conviction themselves so this again suggests that there is a genetic link between um, genes, biological link between human aggression. So moving on to a particular gene that is believed to be involved or have a link to human aggressive behaviour and that is the MAOA gene. Now this is responsible for the production of a protein which is referred to as monoamine oxidase that causes the breakdown of noradrenaline, serotonin and dopamine. Now, it's believed that people can either have a low activity version of this gene, so it doesn't um, allow these neurotransmitters being broken down, or a normal version of this gene. So if adrenaline isn't broken down, then a person could be too hypersensitive, so too sensitive to the fight or flight response. So they might overreact to an external um, stimulus. They might think it's a threat when it's not and respond in an aggressive way. Equally, if dopamine isn't broken down, it can lead to increased levels of dopamine, which has also been suggested could be linked to aggressive behaviour. Now serotonin, we looked at this, has a calming effect on the body and low levels have been implicated in the reduction of control. So if serotonin isn't being broken down effectively, then it might mean the person has less control over that impulsive behaviour and therefore might uh, respond in an aggressive way. Now we have some research into this that suggests that this gene is linked to um, aggressive behaviour. So Bruner studied 28 male members of a large Dutch family. Now these members were repeatedly involved in aggressive violent criminal behaviours. So for example rape, attempted murder and physical assault. Now it was found that those men did appear to have the low activity version of that gene. So it is suggesting that there is a link between having this gene and that criminal behaviour, that violent, that aggressive behaviour. So if we were to look at a AO1 type question that there has been in the past, outline the role of genetic factors in aggression. So you could talk about the idea um, that 
MAOA is an important factor. It doesn't, if you have a low activity version of the gene, you might not break down um, serotonin, noradrenaline and dopamine particularly well. Um, that may cause a person to be hypersensitive to fight or flight. They might overreact to a stimulus in an aggressive way. Their impulsive behavior is less likely to be controlled due to those neurotransmitters not being broken down um, appropriately. You could also mention that there's been research into this area that found that males with the lower activity version of this gene were more likely to commit violent criminal behavior. So if we're going to look at some AO3 then into this topic, there is supporting evidence for the role of MAOA. And it's been found that violent behavior in Finnish pr prisoners was associated with the low activity version of this gene. And there was no evidence of that gene being in non-violent prisoners. So that supports the um, role of MAOA playing a key part in human aggression. However, it is highly reductionist. It's biologically reductionist. It reduces or breaks down the complex phenomena of aggression into a single gene. As concordant rates are not 100% for DZ twins, it suggests that it can't be purely genetic. There needs to be some other element that is involved. Equally, some argue that MZ twins are more likely to be treated more similarly. Family studies have shared environments. So is the concordance rates down to biological genetic factors or are they down to environmental factors? So this does not offer a complete explanation of human aggression. However, it is useful. It has led to important real world applications for genetics. Um, for example, we might be able to offer some offender treatment or rehabilitation if we know that certain individuals have this gene. So it suggests that um, information obtained from genetic studies on aggression may be used to develop interventions that could help those that might be at risk of developing criminal violent behaviour. But equally, we have issues surrounding the testability. So it relies heavily on self-report techniques and meta-analysis. So a meta-analysis found that um, that method of aggression was flawed and it showed large variations in aggressive behaviour. But when observational studies were used, it was found that there was the results indicated that there was less of a genetic influence and more of an environmental one. So that draws into question whether the findings and conclusions are actually valid from such research and how much impact genetics actually has on aggressive behaviour. And it might not be as significant as research first implies. So if we look at a sort of AO1 and an evaluation question in one, so this is only four marks. So briefly outline and evaluate findings of one research study into genetic factors in aggression. So four marks, outline and evaluate, two marks on outline, two marks on evaluate. Findings, so we need to talk about what the research found and a research study into genetic factors. So with this, I would use your Bruner's research and you talk about he studied 28 males and it was found that those that were involved in repeative, aggressive, violent criminal behaviours such as rape, physical assault, attempted murder, had the low activity version of the MAOA gene. And they had low levels of this enzyme in their brain. OK, so talk about that. Then evaluate briefly, so you could talk about either that there's supporting evidence from the Finnish um, prisoners, so those that had the low activity version of the gene were more likely to be violent criminals, whereas people without the low activity version of the gene were non-violent. You could talk about the real world application, so leading to um, rehabilitation and treatment. Equally, you could talk about the actual study itself being gender biased. It was only looking at males, so therefore might not actually apply to female human aggression. We don't know if this gene would be the same for females. 
Moving on to A16 marker then, discuss the role of genetic factors in aggression. So remember the word discuss is outline and evaluate. 16 marker, your two A01 paragraphs, and then your evaluation of three to four evaluation points, depending on what, how well you point evidence, explain and link. So my, if I was to do this, my two A01 paragraphs, I would do one paragraph on um, family studies, so twin studies and adoption studies and what that implies about there being a genetic factor and whether regression is inherited. I would then do my AO1 on the MAOA gene and what that implies and briefly talk about Bruner's research and that it's the low activity version of this gene that leads to aggressive behaviour. And then I would include my three um, evaluation paragraphs, trying to make sure that I link it back and demonstrate what that research, um, that evaluation point is saying about genetic factors and human aggression.